Well, here's a project uh, that was floundering for years and years, and it, it, it was like nobody could get it done. This project had become uh, an albatross in, in Detroit, and most of the people had come to the conclusion that it had to be torn down. And for most of my life, even all through high school and going to Cass Technical High School, I wondered, when are they going to do something with that thing? Well, they is us, and we're doing something today. If you'd have seen this building before it got started. You know, I saw this place about a year ago, and it looked like a bombed out building. It looked terrible. It looked like they took the Titanic and just raced it off the ocean floor and parked it right here because there was nothing left. It was a wreck. From that starting point to this day today, no one in their wildest dream could think this place could look like this again. Nobody. It takes a vision to pull things together to a certain quality that only a few people possess. He has it. The name me one great hotel in this town. There isn't any. There are very few cities of this size that don't have this kind of a kind of a persona. The Downtown Development Authority Board approved about a half a million dollars to do a forensic look at this building to see what it could be. And uh, we got about halfway into it and actually a company called Kimberly Clark, through a whole bunch of series of things, actually said they wanted to redo this hotel. They had a $20 million gap, which truthfully they didn't know it at the time was way more than $20 million. and. Uh, and went to the city and asked the city to basically put in way more money than they had anticipated. And the city, uh, George Jackson, in a frankly a private clandestine call, called me and said, are you still interested in looking at the book Cadillac? As soon as he picked up the phone, first conversation I had, he starts throwing a bunch of crap at me. He got a little back, okay? And eventually the Kimberly Clark people who were running the thing were fired and the whole deal blew up. That's when John Furchell came in and was able to make the job happen. Some people think he's stubborn and can be an ass sometimes, but at the end of the day, it's, there's, a, there's a higher purpose there, you know, there's a goal. And sometimes you just, you gotta do what you gotta do to get the right things done, and it's always about doing the right thing. We did what we normally do, which is we kind of took it on and eventually we got rid of the contractor, got rid of the architect, got rid of everybody that was involved in the project because they just didn't know how to do historic rehab work. The book opened in 1924 and played host to 62 years of Detroit's history, the Halcyon days, and the hellish. While it never lost the elegance of its exterior, when it closed in 1986, that was about all that was left of the good old days. And yet they looked at the photos from 80 years ago and painstakingly reconstructed rooms like the Venetian Ballroom. That's right, de detail by detail. Day in and day out, construction meetings, early morning briefings, afternoon recaps coordination was unbelievable. We tore down four stories of the top tallest part of the building. Uh, structurally it was unsound so we tore it down, uh, started from scratch, built it back up, brand new structural steel, new masonry, uh, concrete. We pumped concrete on this building 31 stories from the ground. We worked a lot of extra hours, put in 98 pieces of structural steel, put in decking, and on the third day, we went ahead and set over 20 pieces of mechanical equipment on the roof of the addition. Each time that I thought I knew what could happen, something completely different was thrown at me. Chris Virchel is vice president of development of the Virchel Group, which guided the nearly $200 million restoration. Yeah, so we're walking through the front door of the Weston Book Cadillac Detroit Hotel, 453 room hotel with 64 condominium units on top. This has really been his project over the last year, year and a half. And I, you know, I'm still the face guy, but I'm not gonna be that for very long. 
and I listen to everybody talk about how lucky Chris is to be involved in this. Do you know how hard it is to follow a guy like me? That's brutal, and it never gets any credit, never gets, but he has become so good that he's gonna rise above that. I, I can't imagine there's a whole lot, of, whole lot more projects out there that were more difficult than this one, so I'm, I'm prepared for anything, and Redding and Willie. Looking forward to it, as a matter of fact. Don't tell me how good looking he is, because I know he looks just like me, which is obviously not true, but that's another story. I keep telling people, you know, I bet he gets up every morning saying, thank God I look like my mother. <laughs> When it opens in the fall, the book Cadillac will add the name Weston to its front end, a brand name that exited the market when it took its name off yet another project that was supposed to save downtown Detroit, the Renaissance Center. But things have changed in the Motor City since then. They built the one thing Furchell needs to see before he invests, a new baseball park. When you were putting 80, 81 events in a baseball game every night in downtown in the summer, action showed up. John Furchell follows the ballparks. If you build it, he builds close by, and yes, they do come, even for the 67 condos. One of the criteria for our agreement with John was that we had to have 25 percent of them sold before we would start to commit uh, funding for the project. We're 53 sold, and we sold 40 of them in the first day two years ago. This was the most complex financing structure that I've ever worked on, and I've been a lawyer for 42 years. I've never worked on a deal that had more lawyers. I've never worked on a deal that had more captains. No soldiers, all captains, and all with very strong opinions about how this should be done. I made him. He was nothing before he met me, and he'll be nothing when I leave. You can quote me on that. Print it. Did you get a chance to interview with Michael? Have you seen him? He's got no personality, doesn't he? He's kind of an introvert, huh? I had known about the project. He started talking about the project. He said, Mikey, what do you say we put a restaurant in there? Food TV celebrity chef Michael Simon says it was love at first sight when scouting out locations for his latest restaurant, Roast. For us, it was like we came in, we looked at the book Cadillac, and in four hours we said, this is, we want to be here. At Roast, dinner is also on display. Just check out this spit and this specially made barbecue, the centerpiece of the restaurant. This is kind of like the big boy version, um, and it was made just specifically for Roast. Michael also decked out his new digs with a massive wine collection, cozy romantic corners, and large family style tables. We want our restaurant to be like, if you came over to my house for dinner, this is how you're going to be treated at my house for dinner. It's taken more than two years, a lot of financing, and the vision of an outsider to make this dream come true. And this weekend is the grand reopening. It's going to be a spectacular Saturday night coming up here. Carmen Harlan met with the two uh, two women who are planning this big gala for the hotel special night. You and I both been over there. Isn't it amazing? Oh, it really is. And one you certainly know, and that's Lisa Ford, who knows a yep. little bit as, about grand opening. She and her husband, Bill Ford Jr., planned a big celebration for the opening of Ford Field. The other Sharon Furchill, wife of John. John Furchill of the Furchill Group. Now, they're not easy to impress, and they know what they like. They have both fallen in love with the Weston's new Book Cadillac Hotel, something Sharon says she saw from the beginning. I remember my first trip here, and it was quite interesting. Well. But it was, I knew as soon as I saw the building that if we were going to do what was in the plan, it was going to be fabulous. We talked about plans for the grand reopening celebration this Saturday. Both Lisa and Sharon's charities, the Children's Center of Detroit, and Cleveland's Jennifer Furchill Foundation will benefit from the event. 25 years ago, my husband and I lost our youngest of three daughters to uh, glioblastoma, which is a brain tumor. And being very young and not having lost any of our grandparents and great-grandparents, we were very unprepared for something like that. So. In lieu of flowers, we started the Jennifer Virtual Foundation. When Jenny died, there were two or three priests, but there was a priest that had more faith than anybody I ever met. His name was Father Marino Frischgatti. And Father Marino said, you know, I figured out why Jenny died. And Marino said, uh, you know, your father's going to be a great man, Jenny. And, and he said he talked to Jenny every day. And, uh, and uh, you got to do great things, John. And you can change people's lives, and there are very few people can do that. And that has never, ever left my mind since the day 
I, since the Jay did, Jenny died, you know, and I tell people all the time, 25 years every day of my life, she impacted, she impacted me, she impacted things, she still does. You gotta have a lot of courage, you gotta have a lot of faith, you gotta have a lot of confidence, and you better surround yourself with a lot of good people like Tim Judson and Marty Herman and Kevin Wigand and the whole gang, because John can't do this alone. Nobody can do this alone. You know, I don't do this without any of you guys, and I think you all know that, you know, and all the stuff that we've been around and, you know, and all the things that we've been together on, it's just been fabulous, and, you know, and I just hope you all understand that I really do understand what it took to get this done, you know, and, and all the little magic tricks and all that, and everybody, I appreciate this, and, you know, it's just one, I mean, let's have fun tonight. I mean, I'm sure we're all glad it's over. I, you know, Chris, stay up there, sell the condominiums, right, Marty? <laughs> <laughs>